Hey everybody, Scott Sprinter here, DocSports.com. Welcome to our update, our NFL preview of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. On this report, this will be available over the next couple of days, and I'll be back on Saturday morning at the very latest, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific, with my next report. If you've missed out on my Rams or Atlanta Falcons preview for the upcoming 2020 season, uh, you can be sure to check those out on my YouTube homepage. And these videos, when I cut them, uh, they're up for a couple of days at DocSports.com on my Handicappers homepage. They're also up on my YouTube page which they'll be up there obviously for several months a real quick updated news Chinese Basketball League uh, called their players back to their teams. We talked about that a few days ago. Uh, they were aiming for an April 15 start. They might be delayed by a week or two, uh, but it looks like at the very latest it's going to start the first week of May. It's good news for us because we are a couple of months behind China in all of this, including uh, basically the country catching the virus. And latest news as far as Mark Cuban uh, has stated is that he came out and he said if the over-under for restarting the NBA was June 1st, he'd play the under. He said he's talked to some CDC officials and he thinks they could get started or restarted with a plan in the NBA uh, by mid-May. So let's hope. Sooner the better, obviously, as long as everybody is safe and healthy. And we hope you are also. But uh, here's what we're going to do also. Real quick note, I did find somebody who's proficient better um, in, in uh, one of the soccer leagues. And it's Belarus League, by the way. And what we're going to do is uh, talk to them a little bit more over the next 24 hours or so and uh, then we may start having a free play on game days of the Belarus Premier League. So we'll let you know because it can be wagered upon. All right, let's get to our update on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And again, uh, just a quick programming note, our next update will likely be on Saturday, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific time. And if you do choose to subscribe, you'll obviously know exactly when we're updating these. Uh, so let's get to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and uh, the 2020 campaign. And again, we may have a few changes between now and August. We're going to update all of these uh, when preseason football finally does get it away. Uh, but again, uh, they're over under wins total this year is uh, seven and a half wins minus a dollar 15 either way uh, which is a game above where they were last year at this time and of course you'll remember uh, they did not finish all that well we're going to get to the obvious the addition of Tom Brady what it means to the offense I'll get to all that in just a minute but one of the key signings or re-signings over the last couple of weeks uh, is Indomitian Sue. they re-signed him uh, it is a big deal if this team expects to make an improvement on last season's seven wins of course he teams up right alongside a defensive tackle Vita Vea, and that's huge. And we saw how much it meant in 2019. And as reported elsewhere, I'm not the first person to bring this up, but with Sue and Vea next to each other up front on the D line, the Buccaneers go from the second to last. Uh, defense in 2018 to first in 2019 in the important category of rush defense DVOA very important metric that I've used uh, since it became available and listen football outsiders DVOA in case you're new to the game or just need a refresher course uh, defense adjusted value over average is what it stands for and what it does is it, it, it calculates a team success based on the down and distance of each play during the course of the season then it turns around and calculates how much more or less success each team is compared to league average. Now, if you don't feel like going back and forth and, and looking for that explanation, just Google defensive DVOA and that very uh, description or definition will appear in front of your eyes. All right, listen, Tampa Bay finished 15th in yards allowed per game last year. Not bad. First in rushing yardage. I just talked about that uh, in allowed per game and, and per attempt as far as rushing yardage. Eighth in completion percentage allowed. But the Bucks were about average in passing yards allowed. Again, not horrible per attempt that is, uh, but we can turn over differential and time of possession per game. Obviously, those last two categories, turnover differential, time of possession per game, should be greatly helped by having a quarterback who makes much better quick decisions under pressure than they had under Jameis Winston. Remember Jameis Winston threw 30, 3-0, 30 interceptions last season. Brady, even a bit of a down season last year, only threw eight through less than 10, which brings us to Brady and the Tampa Bay offense and you know Brady in a recent interview after signing called the Bruce Arians offense uh, a great offense for everybody who's in the huddle if someone's 
open. He said he's going to find him. You got Evans. You've got Godwin, a wide receiver. You got a really decent uh, depth in tight ends. You've got decent talent up front on offense at running, in the running game. And because of that, you might even see Godwin with Brady at the helm having career, uh, career numbers. Best receiver on the team. If all goes as planned, I think he's going to put up some major statistics. And by best receiver, I'm talking about the statistical category for Tampa Bay. Uh, Brady's aggressive percentage metric. I wanted to mention this because it is mentioned on the Buccaneers homepage. And basically, uh, what this is, and I'm, and I'm going to tell you right now, I just went there and I'm reading this to you so you don't have to look it up. Uh, this isn't something that's stored in the back of my mind. But the Bucks are getting a quarterback who is high on the aggressive charts. And basically, what next NFL's next-gen stats do is they compile a metric called aggressiveness that tracks the amount of passing attempts a quarterback makes that are into tight coverage where there is a defender within one yard or less of the receiver at the time of completion or incompletion. And I'm reading this exactly uh, how they judge this aggressiveness stat. So when you look at what happened in 2019, Brady's aggressiveness percentage in 2019 was 15.2%. Here's the thing. Lamar Jackson last year MVP, less than that, 14.7%. They list that 2018 MVP Patrick Mahomes, 12.2%. Remember Brady, 15.2%. Uh, Aaron Rodgers won the MVP a couple of times, 14.2%. Brady's better than that. And they also mentioned that the only quarterback who is ahead of Brady on the NFL's all-time passing charts, Drew Brees, also did not have an aggressive percentage as high as what Tom Brady had in 2019. So when you look at that kind of stuff, you see that this guy's probably got another season or two left in, 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 excuse me, left in him if he stays uninjured. I believe he will. He's got the tools around him uh, to be able to take advantage of what Bruce Arians wants to do. Bruce wants to go long. He wants to go short. He wants to go intermediate. And Brady, we think, can make all those throws. We'll see if he can still go deep. There were question marks last year, but he really didn't have uh, really good downfield receivers alongside of him for very much of the season. Looking at their schedule as we wrap things up on Tampa Bay, as far as the home games are concerned, the Falcons, the Panthers, the Saints, the Packers, Vikings, Chiefs, Chargers, Rams. That is not an easy home slate. Uh, first of all, they could lose any of those divisional games at home uh, against a decent division. And then you got home games outside of your division against the Packers. That could end in a loss. The Vikings, the Chiefs, going to be hard-pressed to, to, uh, to beat them, depending on the uh, section of the season that comes in. And, and the Rams will be probably slightly improved. I mean, it's going to be tough, I think, for Tampa Bay to be better than 4-4 four and four straight up at home this season. The road games, of course, they got the divisional games. Then you got games at Soldier Field against Chicago. Winnable game, could lose it just as easily. A 50-50 type game at Denver in all likelihood. At Detroit, you would think that they go in there with the mindset that they're going to win that game. Uh, and, of course, they've got games on the road against the Giants and the Las Vegas Raiders. They're both winnable games. I think this is going to be a team that lands around 500. The best thing about Brady, if his arm is not weary from all its use over the, all the years in New England, is that he not only has those aggressive metrics I told you on his side and a good receiving core and good tight ends, uh, but he's such a great improvement in the locker room. Not that Jameis Winston wasn't liked, but you guys know Brady's a general in that locker room and he does it in in a player's mentality type of way where players tend to want to play alongside him. That's why we're seeing all these veterans talking about they want to join Brady in Tampa Bay. Heck, Mike Evans, Buccaneers receiver, uh, couldn't stop celebrating the fact that they signed Tom Brady last week. So that in itself makes this team a little bit better. But again, betting over seven and a half wins is not easy right now with this team because they do have some question marks and we got to see if Brady, uh, his arm is weary from all its use. We'll find out, I think, rather quickly when these teams start getting uh, practice underway and into preseason. But again, uh, lean towards Tampa Bay, finishing with eight wins, not enough separation off that seven and a half for me to jump in and make a bet. And we'll update this again in you know, late July. If we get past this virus like we should and we start to see uh, NFL players and teams coming together almost like normal or normal, Normal, and we get into preseason football in August, then we'll be updating these team previews. But again, my initial thoughts for 2020, Tampa Bay
Bay Buccaneers likely right around eight wins with some wiggle room. All right, listen, we'll be back again no later than Saturday, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific. May have some free soccer plays for you then. Maybe some premium picks also. We'll check and see. We'll let you know. And uh, listen, if you like the videos, click on that thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe. I do appreciate those who have done so thus far. Don't forget to check out DocSports.com. There are some soccer picks up from a couple of other guys at DocSports.com on almost a daily basis. And uh, you'll be able to check those out, plus pl uh, plenty of free information. Great odds, by the way, uh, from Rafael Esparza, who's a member of the DocSports.com team, also a lines maker for many years, both in Las Vegas and elsewhere. And uh, he's putting up incredibly interesting odds almost daily. And they're all available for, for free at DocSports.com, so check it out. All right, we'll talk to you again on Saturday, and we'll have another football team for you available with our next thumbnail. Take care, everybody. Stay healthy.